Growing up in southeastern New Mexico, in Carlsbad, New Mexico, where I'm from, I was always fascinated by space. I remember seeing astronauts on TV when I was really little and thinking, you know, I might want to do that when I grow up. Later, my parents took me on a trip to the Space Museum in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and that was it. I was hooked. I was going to be an astronaut. At the time, that meant I needed to pursue a STEM-based career, one underpinned by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, I remember a conversation with my mom one time where she, she told me, you know, if you really want to pursue a career in space and be an astronaut, you ought to consider becoming an engineer. But mom, I don't want to drive trains. I want to fly rockets. Well, in fact, I did pursue an engineering degree from New Mexico State University. And then later, yeah, woo -hoo, New Mexico State University, yeah. <laughs> and then later, I went on to a career in the US Air Force, which led me to where I am today, back here in Albuquerque, working for the military's newest service, the US Space Force. In my role with the Space Force, I've seen a complete sea change in the space industry over the last several years. And it's one you might not know about, and that's the meteoric rise of the global commercial space economy. I think many of you have heard about space tourism. You might have heard about Virgin Galactic, a company right here in New Mexico who's conducting space flights right out of our state. Or you may have heard of SpaceX, which has completely revolutionized the way we, as a society, access space through their amazing reusable rockets. But these companies have pioneered more than just space tourism. In fact, space tourism is only a small fraction of the growing commercial space industry. What these companies have actually pioneered is mainly ushering in the second golden age of space, which is this. Because it's now so much cheaper to launch objects like satellites into space, the likes of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs are rushing to put the latest gadget into space or to create some other new capability from space in the hopes of becoming the next generation of wealthy tech moguls. Take, for instance, the company Maxar, with over 400 satellites in space, which are taking pictures of the Earth on a near real-time basis, and who's become one of the go-to sources for what's happening in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This is a private sector company. Or the company Hawkeye 360, who is monitoring global shipping lanes uh, at sea, if I can get this into space, um, by tracking vessels and ships at sea with satellites that look very much like this. This is a full-scale replica of some of the satellites these companies are launching. Or another company, Orbital Sidekick, which is actively tracking and monitoring oil and gas pipelines for leaks and is actively tracking wildfires. By some estimates, the growing commercial space industry is on track to reach $3 trillion in the next several years. That's trillion with a T, which puts it in the same league as the overall consumer electronics and automobile industries. And that's great news for the country's economic prosperity and for those of us seeking innovation for the purposes of national security. But is that yet good news for New Mexicans? I'm afraid New Mexico doesn't yet recognize this opportunity and we're gonna mess out. I've noticed through my work that many New Mexicans don't think of the state as one of the hubs in the new space economy. In fact, I'd suggest many New Mexicans probably don't think of the state as a place for tech. Do you? Even though we have all the ingredients to be a tech hub, few New Mexicans would know where to find or how to access this tech sector. But in fact, we do have all the ingredients to be a major player in the new space economy. From our early history of space innovation all the way back to Robert Goddard and his flight experiments, his rocket experiments down in Roswell, New Mexico, to now hosting elements of the new US Space Force right here at Kirtland Air Force Base. We're surrounded by world-class research at our national labs and our four major research universities. And we have robust adjacent industry sectors in agriculture, medicine, bio, energy, and a growing film and entertainment industry that's coming to depend on New Mexicans. At the rate the current industry is going, there is a lot of opportunity for us to get involved in the new space economy. After founding the Space Force's new innovation unit, SpaceWorks, 
I have noticed an exciting new trend, and it's one that may help New Mexico realize its potential in the new space economy, which is this. No longer is space just for rocket scientists and engineers. It's for everyone. Consider my friend, entrepreneur Devaki Raj, who founded the company Crowd AI, an artificial intelligence company that's enabling anyone to fuse satellite imagery in order to make sense of Earth-based phenomena such as hurricanes, wildfires, and crop yields. Or Maureen Gannon, co-founder of Crossbow Launch Systems, a company right here in New Mexico that's pioneering the 3D printing of rocket motors. Or Agnes Chavez, a new media artist and educator from Taos, New Mexico, who founded STEM Arts Lab, which is enabling teachers and students to develop artistic, scientific, and humanistic literacy through a space-themed virtual reality experience and installation. These innovators represent a new class of entrepreneurs that are not only adding value to the world economy, but that are also driving equity and ensuring the safety of all world citizens. At the rate the current industry is growing, companies are already in need of business people, communicators, content creators, artists, designers, and craftspeople. Companies like OrbitFab, who's putting gas stations in space. And in case you didn't hear me, I said gas stations in space. <laughs> They're gonna need expertise and logistics. Or the company Astroscale, who's developing a space debris cleanup operation. You can think of it as a space junk cleanup operation, more or less trash trucks in space. They're gonna need expertise in waste management. Or the company, a local company, Descartes Labs in Santa Fe, who's enabling farmers to monitor their fields through the use of satellite imagery. They're gonna need expertise in agriculture. No longer is the space industry just for rocket scientists and engineers. It's for anyone who's passionate about climate change, food sustainability, medicine, art exhibition, construction, and business innovation. There is literally unlimited space to create new endeavors and new ventures in and from space. And there's virtually unlimited potential to do that right here in New Mexico. All it takes is a creative imagination and a willingness to try something new and to get involved. And one of the ways you can get involved is through a brilliant new initiative being established by the coalition of several New Mexico nonprofits, universities, federal, state, and local government entities, and the entrepreneurial ecosystem here called the Space Valley Coalition. The coalition will soon be rolling out programming aimed at plugging more New Mexicans into the growing space economy, including a space company incubator with programming for business mentorship, coaching, and back office support. There'll be curriculum to develop and upskill the space workforce of the future. And there'll be facility space to enable industry players to develop and build out regional operations here. From my perspective, the growth of New Mexico's economy depends on the new space industry. And the new space industry depends on New Mexicans' willingness to advocate for and launch new space endeavors. And ultimately, that comes down to you. Looking back on my younger years when I wanted to go to space, I remember thinking, you know, the sky isn't the limit. And in fact, the sky isn't the limit if you want to get involved in the new space economy in New Mexico. What new idea will you launch today? <laughs>